welcome, 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 welcome. Okay, we're ready to go. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, this first hybrid uh, attempt here for the Florida Tug. Uh, my name's Aaron. I'm here with uh, Emil Medina, Erica Plemons from the leadership team here in person with Chris Tauber, who's gonna be presenting for us today. Um, just real quick, gonna go through a couple of slides after I get rid of what's on the screen. What does that say? Got it. All right, that's us. Uh, I'm Aaron. Uh, this is the leadership team. Uh, a couple of us here are in person. I uh, want you to stay connected with us. We have LinkedIn group for the uh, Orlando Tableau user group, but we've expanded to the Florida user group uh, to try to reach as many people as we can. Uh, our email is there, Twitter is there, our event page on the Tableau website. We also have a Slack channel. Feel free to connect with us there if you have any questions, comments, concerns. A couple of job postings that we've received since uh, the last uh, meeting that we had, uh, Data Meeting, Rollins, Universal, and Playfair Data has a internship as well for any college kids out there. Uh, with that, uh, that's up for, for me until the end. Chris, Great. good luck. Thank you. Let me, um, I don't know how to get rid of that. Maybe get out of Screen it's, it's, it's not okay okay everybody here can see it. yeah sure i know let me i saw the arrow one second there you know what let me just just for, yeah for the folks here I can get that out. Hi, everybody. Okay, there we go. And take a minute. Okay, thanks for your patience, folks. Yeah, uh, it's a new experience being in person again. So appreciate everybody, uh, the folks that are here in person as well as those online. Um, great to, to see the, the people here, and thank you everybody else for, for joining online too. Uh, yeah, my name is Chris Tauber, and I do data for execs, both a magazine and a consulting service. Um, I was actually here at Rollins, geez, like eight years ago or so now, in the same room saying, I'm going to start this agency that's going to show data for executives. And it was, you know, at the time I worked at SeaWorld and I knew there's a better way to do this than just Excel sheets and, and PDFs and, and things that pe nobody can look at or understand or, or read. So um, since that day, yeah, it's, it's been a number of years. And it's been a great, uh, great ride. I've, I've worked with, uh, you know, theme parks here in town. I work with some of the folks on the leadership team at Universal, as well as um, Papa John's for, for a number of years, uh, Lego, Virgin Voyages, Travel and Leisure, a lot of fun brands. I've been re really lucky to do stuff that I would use anyway. I eat a lot of pizza. Um, I like to you know, go on vacation, so I get to do data related to that as well. So, so that's been great. Uh, so yeah, what I'd love to show you today is a series I've been doing on LinkedIn this year called Biz This, Not That. It's kind of a spinoff of this Data for Executives magazine that I do, um, where I'm, I'm trying to, to take a lot of the, the knowledge I've had over the years in Tableau and not as technical as I think a lot of the folks possibly here in the room or online can do where you can really do some magic uh, in terms of sets, actions, things that, that are, are incredible. What I try to do then is like, okay, let's make sure that a director or an executive knows what they're looking at. And even better, more and more, can they manipulate the data? Can they look at it and find what they're looking for? And they don't even have to uh, work with the data team. So we can focus more on some of these deeper questions. So I've, I've seen a lot and I've tried to boil it down at least for today into, okay, well, what's like the top five things I do in Tableau that can help uh, with you in, in terms of how do you take the dashboards, the charts, things that you make and, and make them ready for executives. And my focus here, of course, is executives, but really what I found is that's good for anybody, for any stakeholder, um, even like for Papa John's, for example, I do a lot of executive um, dash slide hybrids and even then taking those out to store owners across the country because it's so intuitive and they know how to use the data and they can see it. And so it's, it's executives, but it's also everybody, um, because I think most people want to see the data at a glance and know what it means. And if they have a question, they'd like to manipulate a little bit, 
go a little bit deeper on their own. So uh, today, based on that, I've got five top, um, top subjects I want to look at. The first one is comparisons. And this is one that has been of my LinkedIn posts by far the most popular. I was kind of surprised by it because I, I've been doing it like this for, for a number of years, uh, but hopefully that helps a lot of people. So I'll, I'll go through how, how do you compare? Mainly for me, um, year over year is the example to look at. Uh, and then colors, I know a lot of folks deal with colors. You can read a lot about colors. And it's just a good reminder, again, at the executive level, uh, which colors and which approaches help the best. Um, and then vertical, there's a way I've seen so many times of a uh, line charts that are horizontal. And man, if you just flip them, the, the meaning is, is so much clearer. Fourth one is a big one that I've been doing a lot is trend lines. And again, this isn't like a very super advanced statistical model. It's just answering the question, well, where is this stuff going? Are we getting better? Are we getting worse? At a high level, um, you want to be able to see that right away. So there's some, some quick trip, uh, tricks there that help you with that. And then one that I've really been trying to perfect on my own, and man, we've got a lot of good comments uh, on LinkedIn and, and other people. How do you get a scatter plot at an executive level? Because they're really helpful for covering a whole lot of data, and yet understanding it really quickly is a challenge. So keep in mind, how do I get a scatter plot better and better and better? So I'll show you where I'm at now. And, and with any of these two, you know, this is a conversation. Um, happy to take questions at the end, happy to talk in person. Uh, but trying to get better and better, you know, every year, every chart, every slide, uh, make it better. And all of a sudden you, you look back and like, okay, I mean, I could show you some stuff I did when I first appeared here. It's like, I, I couldn't even show you guys that anymore. It was, uh, <laughs> I've uh, improved a lot um, since then. And I'm, I'm sure you guys have as well. Uh, so the first one, it was the most popular one that I've done, this viz this, not that, of how do you do a good comparison? And the one on the right, uh, uh, the, the not that one, I'll get into deeper. Um, so yeah, most of the time, if you do see this on LinkedIn, almost all the time, I'm actually building these slides, a the full slide in Tableau and manipulating it there. Um, and that's why I do a lot in my work now. I'd say probably about 70% of my work, I'm building full interactive slides in Tableau and publishing those to like a, a Tableau server or Tableau online so that people can um, explore them themselves, export it right out into PowerPoint and, and present it too. And that's been a, a really great workflow. So this one, Let's just start with a comparison here. The what's the difference? You've got uh, basically the defaults. And again, I, I always suggest if you're an analyst, you know, you do what you got to do. If, if blues and oranges, if, uh, if the default bar charts, if you can make sense of this and if your team of analysts can make sense of it, great. You, you don't, don't need to keep going. But the more you share it and the higher up you go in your company, I strongly suggest continuing to refine it in the way that you can get the communication to be as clear as possible. So if you, if you are going to be sharing this further, I wouldn't stop at the, the not that, is just the value only. You just drag the value you know, over onto the shelf, left it there. The automatic choice for the, bar, for the chart happened to be a bar chart in this case. Sometimes that's fine. Sometimes you need to get off of that default. And then the, the default colors as well, the blue and orange, that can be a separate conversation. I'm happy to have with, with you guys on my opinions of, of um, of the defaults and, and what's best, um, but often I will change off the default for that too. And then it's really, it's not that hard to, um, to start making it clearer. Um, so in this case, I do try to declutter it first. And you know, in, in Tableau, there's a format, you can do a lot of things. I'll often take off the grid lines. So the focus is just on the, the lines generated by the data itself. Um, in this case, I found that comparisons are, are usually best over time with as a line chart. So just flip that to line chart. And then the, the colors too, you, I've really thought about what does work best in terms of a comparison. And what I found is usually I'll do um, a dark blue as the current year or the, the prominent one I want to be like the main focus. And then either the prior year or um, the data point that's not as important. I'll either do that in a light blue or a gray, depending on how it works. But that then just has, you, has it jump out more of what you're trying to look at um, and what's most important. And then when it gets into the bit of the tricks, uh, I know a lot of you guys may, may know this already, some of you may not, but I found, well, what I wanted to do then is show the, the difference between the two in a separate chart. And it took me a while to, to figure this out but then I realized, well, you know what? If you do put the year, um, 
you know, over on the, the rows, that's gonna separate those lines. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a separate sheet, um, just to be a bit technical here. So the first sheet, you know, you've made, you made the line charts, you make a second sheet to create that, the bar chart underneath that's gonna show the differences, the, the red and the green bar chart. So that's a separate sheet. Um, I put the two, um, so the two years on the rows and that's gonna split up the, those two lines. And then just a couple things here. I do the that quick table uh, calculation a lot of the difference as well as the percent difference. And that's super handy. If you haven't used that already, I do that all the time in business because everybody wants to just compare something, whether it's an AB test, compare it versus the A, uh, a year over year, compare it versus the prior year, month over month, compare it versus the previous month, everything like that. I'll, I'll always uh, create a, a difference and a percent difference um, calculation off of that from the quick table calculation and then modify it a bit you know, in the editing of it. Um, and then you add the, the uh, year over year value in this case um, to the rows as well. So then you're gonna generate that bottom chart um, that will show you not the, the value of it, but the year over year of it. And then I always uh, will, will make this consistent throughout the comparisons I do. So you then see that the difference is generated as a bar. And that's something that either I'll uh, for the most part, I'll do that as the volume, like the the um, and not the percentage. Um, it, it depends, but but that's a, a huge one where the year over year is always the bar. I'll then set the color to the red and the green, and this is one too. I understand um, red and green. You know, there's a consideration of of color blindness, and some people cannot tell the difference between uh, many of the hues of of red and green. So if you are using that. I, I do then uh, suggest building in other ways that uh, the data is being communicated. Here, I have the zero line that I make very dark. So you can tell, okay, that's the, um, the, what's uh, dividing these two. And then the length of the bars and the direction that they are, and then often the labeling as well. So if, you, if there is an issue where people can't tell the difference of those two colors, there are other cues in there. And then it does build for the, the people who can tell at a glance, okay, the green is good, the red is bad you know, for US business audiences for the most part. Um, and it's, it just makes it more at a glance. So you can see, well, here are the big differences and go from there. And then if you just hide, uh, hide the previous year and then hide the headers in Tableau, I just, in this case, I just wanna focus on that the bar chart. So the calculations are being done still in the two years of prior and the current, but I've hidden them so that now it's just going to show in this chart the, the differences. And it's just a, it's a matter of just a, a quick couple, um, you know, clicks on the menu. And then when, when I do that, I'm putting the, the um, line chart on the top and then the bar chart below and making sure that then the year or the month, excuse me, in this case, are all lined up still. So we've got, you know, January is over January, uh, July is over July. And here you can see much different than what we, what we used to have that uh, where the big differences are. And then I make sure I do label it, like I said. So in this case, I am looking at the volume, but, and this is another discussion, um, what's more important, the volume or the percent difference? Um, in this case, if we're talking about sales, for example, uh, you do want to see what the volume is, what the volume difference is. Um, but then I will do the the percent difference as a secondary uh, label there, and, and again, do the the, uh, the fonts and the weighting accordingly. So the most of the emphasis is on the volume difference, but then there's inevitably the question: Well, what is that in terms of a percent? That's right there as well, because um, sometimes that that matters more than others. And then just label it really clearly. So um, I mean, I've done this for, yeah, for again, quite a number of years and it's always clear. And it's always a way, I've done variations of this too, where it's like, you know, that you have, again, say an AB test, you have the A is the, the light blue, the B is the dark blue on a certain metric conversion rate or something. Um, and then you show the red and the green of the difference between the two. You can do them across metrics. You can split up the, the, um, or do a parameter to say, okay, well, let's look at this at a weekly, at a monthly, uh, at a quarter level, um, change the level of detail, and that will always recalculate this.
that show you what you what a, a leader wants to see, which is okay. Well, where are the big differences? And then here you can see, all right. Well, we do we did have a big one, um, you know, in July. What what happened there? Okay, and then we did rebound in the rest of the year, um, and consider what happens with that. So that's just a, a great way to to look at the comparison um, in Tableau, and it's and it's super uh, flexible in Tableau too. So I I, I love this one. Yeah, I took it for granted. I was doing this a lot. People loved it uh, on LinkedIn. It's like, okay, please, you know, if this helps helps any of you guys, please, please use it. Um, and the second one, and then that's the one I'll get to uh, the most in depth. Uh, and I'm happy to talk about any of uh, the rest of these, uh, more of the technical stuff. But a lot of these are, like I said, are more about you've already created this in Tableau. What can you do quickly, efficiently to get it ready for, for an executive audience or, or a larger audience? Um, and here I've, I've got to kick the uh, kick the pie chart um, when it's down, as you know I can't help it. Um, the pie chart itself is is a is a is a not the best visualization, as I think a lot of you guys probably know. Um, but if you do have to use one, or if you do, you do a lot of charts, you know you're using area chart or bar chart or or line chart. So many times the default colors here, if you have a lot of different elements. It's just going to turn into a rainbow. It, it doesn't become very meaningful. Nothing really stands out. Um, so if you are having to do that, at least go into the the um, editing the colors and try to find what's most important for the the executive audience. Uh, in this case, if it's just the first few categories, you don't really want to go in the long tail. You just don't see well. What are the bigger big movers? What are the big shifts in the in the mix? Um, then just focus on that and put the rest in gray. I mean, that's, that's uh, advice that you'll hear a lot. If something isn't as important to that audience, put it in the background. The great thing about Tableau is if you're presenting this um, as an interactive slide, if they wanna see, well, what's that tiny little sliver over there? You can hover over it you can see what it is. Um, if you're, if you're uh, presenting a static version of it, but you may wanna take note yourself or have the interactive version handy, during your presentation, so you can answer those questions on the fly. But for the most part, at that level, they're just trying to see the biggest movers and, and what's affecting the, their goals and the bottom line the most. So just highlight those. Be very thoughtful about the type of colors you're going to use. And again, Tableau is very easy to, to change the colors, whether it's a um, one of these color palettes already, a custom color palette, um, one of the diverging color palettes. Those are all really helpful to, to make sure that you're not using a rainbow. And then this one is a, is a fast one too. And again, if you've ever created a slide and then not that, and I, you know, I know sometimes the not that is gonna be okay. I'm just trying to look at, uh, for the most part, an executive audience, they've only got a few minutes of, of attention. What can you do to get them to see like what you want them to see so that they can um, make the right decisions? I have seen a lot of these line charts where you've, you've got you know, multiple metrics stacked up on top of each other and they're all horizontal, it's like a massive sandwich and you don't know what is standing out. Um, you can manipulate the axes, but then even that might mess it up further because it looks like it, that maybe one isn't as important as the other because it's on a different axis. Um, so I, I found here, instead of putting that metric, for example, in this case on the rows, all you have to do is just put it onto the columns. And again, it's, it's a simple thing, that's a great thing about Tableau. It's easy to, to manipulate, drag and drop, try something else. But in this case, what I found is if you can show that one of the metrics is so much higher than the others, and is in this case, like, you know, increasing at such a higher rate, that's more meaningful to the, to the leadership team. They wanna see what are the biggest uh, movers and what are the biggest trends. And just taking it into this type of, of um, format, it's something you can do with the meetings five minutes away. It's like, uh oh, we've got too many of these. Just flip it up into the into the columns, and it's going to change the whole nature of it. Um, and again, it's all all of this is really thoughtful. It's not it's not to say that you do this all the time. If in this case, from your from your um, you know knowledge of the business, if you know that that second metric, the one that is taking off and is dominating, is the most important story then this is the way to, to illustrate that. Uh, I wouldn't do this if, it, if it's not, or if it changes the nature of the story. But in this case, that story is hidden if they're all 
literally flatlining like that. You can't tell which one is, is supposed to stand out. So um, all of this is to make sure that what you're trying to convey is going to be conveyed, you know, uh, accurately to the to the audience. And the trend lines here, uh, this is one as well where I, I've done this quite a bit too. Um, like I mentioned at the top, uh, if you have a more advanced statistical model that is showing you where the business is going, how fast it's going there, and you've built a, a lot of uh, variables into it, great, please use that. Some companies, many companies don't have that. And what they wanna do is take this, this first slide, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's fine. It's, it's a little bit hard to see, but I've, I've had that a lot. Like, okay, so where is this headed? What are we, what are we looking to accomplish? Um, which metric is, is moving the fastest or moving in the way that we want? And what's it going to be by the end of the year if, if a, lot of, um, a lot of goals and targets are based on, on year-end type of things? So in this case, it's fine. Again, at the analyst level, you can certainly do it, do it like that. But I found that if you can just do a couple things in Tableau, show the trend lines. Again, it's a linear trend line. If this does represent the story, if you're working with somebody who's doing a more advanced model and they say, yes, a trend line is appropriate. You know, if you, if you are looking at a data set that's like, you know, just zooming all over the place, a trend line isn't capturing that. Of course, don't, don't use that. But in, in a data set, it's, it's like this, where yes, there's maybe some seasonality, some different changes, but overall, you're trying to see a larger pattern there. Uh, just hitting the, the show trend lines uh, that's available in Tableau is a great way to, to look at where things are headed. And then I'll do the, a fixed end on the, on the um, axis. And that's also something that I manipulate a lot as well. The axis titles, the axis um, marks, the fonts, the weights of the fonts, all of that, these subtle little things, that, which I haven't touched on a, on a lot of these, but I will make you know, the, the markers like an eight point gray and then the labels a 10 point uh, pure black and things like that, just to make sure that you're conveying the, the data and the rest of the framework is kind of more of a of, uh, just that, like kind of framing it up, but it's not taking any focus away from that. So here, if you do the show the trend line, and then the key is setting it to, for example, the end of this year, then the trend line is going to continue to the end. So people will say, you know, a lot of times like at, at the university, they'd say, well, what, if we look at like five years worth of data, where is that going in three years from now? We can just change it to that and just again linear trend line to show where we're going to be hitting at that at that um, end point, and then it looks something like that. Um, so then you can show, all right, yes, we're going to look at this full end of the year, and then from a strategic point of view too, you can recolor the the color legend. In this case, I, I did something like this similar to uh, you know NPS scores and the the share of promoters, detractors, and, and passives. And so if the, you know, I, I labeled the, the promoters green, um, the detractors red, the passives were gray in that case. And you could see, all right, are we getting more promoters? Are we getting fewer detractors? That's what we're trying to do. And by having this type of approach, yeah, you can kind of get that from just looking at the original line chart. But this way, again, executive level, they just wanna know, are we getting more promoters? Yes, we are. Are the detractors going down? Yes, they are. Are they gonna be even further down by the end of the year? At this rate, yes, they will. And you're answering uh, these high level questions in a, in a very quick way, but it still has the context too. Anyone can still see, oh, but there is a lot of fluctuation here. So it's not a guarantee. Yes, you have a question? So you uh, have to set the uh, unchecked and show zero and then set the unchecked and show Oh yeah, that's right. So this is another thing too. Um, so you're trying to hide magnitude out of there. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, when I first actually posted this, I was showing the zero. And some of the comments were, well, in this case, because all the, all the, um, the action is basically higher up on the axis, you wouldn't necessarily have to show the zero. And I did take it off. I, the only time I make sure I always show the zero is if I'm doing a bar chart. Otherwise, for line charts, for example, um, like Papa John's, their, their average order value is in a certain range. It's never zero or $3 or $5, but they wanna see, well, did it move in this certain range? 
And so if I had kept the zero all the time, it would, most of it, most of the, the uh, chart would be white and they it couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry for the, for the folks online. I, I should repeat the question. Um, question about not showing the zero here on this, on this um, vertical axis. And it's, it's a great point because um, that is, that's one of the biggest fails of charts that you might see on TV a lot. Uh, I think uh, three or three um, mystery chart show will show that a lot where they will uh, they'll have a chart to show on TV. It doesn't have a zero on the bar chart. So you have a bar chart that's completely truncated and you're just showing these, these massive swings and, and the bar chart that, that um, seems to be always, I think, a misrepresentation. I do think there are cases on a line chart like this where, where eliminating the zero allows you to see the fluctuations in the range um, that's expected. But, but to your question, yeah, if, if, that, if by eliminating the zero does misrepresent it, then absolutely don't, don't do it. It's only if it helps convey the message to the audience that I would do it. And, and every, every one of these decisions should be considered. I, I, I work on these a lot and I've thought about, well, should I do this, should I do that? And, and if the question is, I don't know if I should do that, well, then you probably shouldn't do it. Just keep the zero on there and, and, and keep it out to the audience for sure. And even this, you know, the, um, some of the comments I got back on this one was, well, the trend line, you know, is, that is a very basic way to do it. And that, you know, again, I absolutely agree. It's, it's a caveat here. If it represents the general direction, then make sure in your, in your, uh, in the headline that you put on this and your talking points, the, the data is showing a um, general trend up. We're not saying it's, it's a trend that is going to hit a certain percent at a certain time. It's just answering a very general question, but it is very helpful um, because sometimes the details aren't as needed um, at, at certain leadership team uh, meetings. And then my last one is that scatter plot. And again, I am so interested in getting this better and better because I have not, I have not mastered this. Uh, not that I've mastered any of these, but but the scatter plot I think is one that is especially useful for executives and especially complicated as well. So what what I've been doing. Um, you know, of course, starting at the defaults again, like 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 we have to do, but not stopping at the defaults. And I think that's an issue with with scatter plots as well. You find two um, two measures, and you think, well, great, I'll put this on the row, this on the shop, on the columns, um, throw a label on them, and okay, yeah, I kind of see what's happening here. It, at an analyst level, that's great, and that may be very helpful to see where things are positioned. But I've I've seen many times you put this in front of a um, executive, and it's like, okay, what am the, the horrible thing you never want to hear. What am I looking at? Um, that's that's the opposite. You want to see instead. You want to hear. Wow. Okay, I get it. Um, and so the scatter plot has some some real advantages if you can figure out how, the best way to do it. So what what I've been doing um, the last couple of years is making sure that I'm, I'm splitting it into quadrants. And actually, this morning I was just having a, um, a back and forth with someone about this too. Um, how do you draw the quadrant? How do you make it so that the, the, the dots in this quadrant are good, dots in this quadrant are bad? These two you don't have to worry about as much. Uh, that's ultimately what you're trying to do. Um, that's, that's used in a lot of the business cases like the dogs and the stars and um, a lot of matrices, matrices like that. So I do try to get it so that you do have a quadrant. And what I do as a default then is uh, I will just use a, uh, the average line. If, Again, if that makes sense to the story, and if that's a starting point, ideally you'd have a target that you're trying to hit on on both of the metrics, and so this is clear. Okay, yeah, these are both above the the, uh, the targets, and we're in good shape. Um, but if not, I, I do suggest having a starting point. It helps organize that scatter plot. So you so an executive isn't looking at um, thirty dots; they're looking at four things, and then they know what to do if something appears in one of those quadrants. We need to scale it. We need to lose it. We don't, we don't have to prioritize it, things like that. And then once you do that, I don't label all of the, all of the uh, points either. I just label the ones that, again, that, that tell the business story that would be most important to the executives. So here, let's say, well, we wanna point out the one that has you know, the most profit and the highest sales. We wanna point out one that, that has a low profit but high sales. 
those are the ones that we really need to focus on. And then color them accordingly. You know, I'll use the red and green here as well. Also knowing that if, again, the colorblind issue, you can see it from the axes. So it's not only relying on the, on the red and green. Red and green is almost more of an enhancement than it is a necessary aspect of these charts. So once you do that and then label it in a way that if you don't even read any of the, or decipher any of the, um, the labeling, but I'll, I'll label it extensively on just a few of the points that are most important. So if you're just reading those little factoids, that's gonna get you the information. You know, okay, these are the three things I need to worry about, where they're positioned and, and go from there. And that's, that's been a big help um, for me, I found. Uh, again, especially if you have a huge data set, you do need to kind of show where everything is, but that's just too much to put on a line chart, too much to put on a bar chart, area chart, Sankey, which I, I've never figured out how to use for executives. I, um, you know, this is a good way to, to present a lot of information uh, to them. And that's what I've got uh, for today. Those five, I mean, again, I'm always looking, I'm happy to, to uh, take questions online or, or here in person, um, as well as I try to post these at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, and and am eager to engage in the comments so that we can all learn from each other, um, get better, and, and make it so that the not bad examples fall away and we're all just doing the business. Um, because and, and Tableau does make a lot of this possible too. So we can certainly get better, but yeah, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and, um, and yeah, happy to take, take, take any questions, Scott. I think there may be some questions there. Uh, yeah. So much easier. Oh, this, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Do you want to go through that too? Yeah. Yeah, we can, we can put it on that. that's great. Any questions? No, 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 no. No? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but, but yeah, there's one there, but I was just on that one that was lying that you're showing on the scattered plot there. Right? Yeah. Yes. But you said, again, it's just that you recently, you don't have a fixed those, are they doing a uh, statistical measure either, right? You can use uh, you can use average, but you on them, but you could set them uh, like in a scenario or anything like. Uh, Power plant parts that had run beyond a certain number of hours, mm -hmm. a certain number of starts, and you want to delineate the you know, ones that had low hour, low start failures there. You can just add that back. Yeah. So You totally could, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the question was, yeah, with the scatter plot, like, can you can you basically adjust, yeah, adjust those the lines, the reference lines? Um, I'll see there, um, but yeah, you you absolutely can, and you're right. Uh, you know, I, I just showed averages. You can show a constant if there was a target, or you, if you had that mortality, uh, infinite mortality line. What was it? Yeah, it's like one of the failure functions. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you if you have like a set failure rate and you just plot that there, so you would see, okay, what's above the failure rate, what's below. I mean, that's fantastic. You you can um, set that to you know certain like parameter values or other calculations, and um, yeah, that's, that's just scratching the surface of what you can do with those those lines. I mean, as well, I've tried to do that too, where I've uh, colored the background behind it, so you can see, all right, here's the red zone, here's the green zone, here's like the don't need to pay attention to it zone. And if something hits up into the, the green, okay, well, there you go too. So yeah, that, that's super flexible. I think the, the main focus is if you can just add a layer of meaning to the scatter plot, whatever is meaningful for your business, what you're trying to achieve, that makes the scatter plot much more useful, I found. Can you go back to the pie chart? Oh my gosh, the pie chart slide. Okay, okay. You're gonna make me do it. <laughs> oh, it was pie there. <laughs> so did you have a question? Yeah, someone had a question. The beginning of it? I want to know, like you received a lot of pushback using pie charts, although they love the way that you displayed it with the gray colors. Um, like have, have I tried to use the pie chart? And right. have you tried to, uh, I'm just interrupting. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you uh, used it and gotten pushback from people for using it? 
Um, good question. Yeah. So, so the pie chart, have I got pushback for using it? So I actually, yeah, I've worked with um, Papa John's for, I don't know, seven years or so now. I've probably done like 2000 slides for them at least. And I've used a pie chart one time and they're a pizza company. So you think that I would do that all the time. Like, oh, great. Let's take one slice out here, one slice out there. I, I don't do it. I just, I don't do it. And I never really knew why I didn't do it until, you know, I started reading uh, the community and like, okay, yeah, here are why pie charts aren't good. And like, okay, that's it. Um, I mean, it's really because if you, do, if you think about your middle school geometry class, the area of a pie chart, and I was just helping my, one of my kids with this, uh, maybe you remember it, or area of a pie would be, you know, pi times radius squared. Then what's the area of a slice? I have no idea. I have no idea. She's in, she's in seventh grade. She hasn't got to that yet. Uh, I still could, I wouldn't be able to remember. It has to do with the radians, I think, and the arc and all that. Um, if you think, well, what's the area of a rectangle? Well, that's length times width. All right, well, what's a, what's a piece of that rectangle? What's length times width? Well, what's a piece? It's a length times width. So that's, it's just our brains can handle that computation better. And visually, we can see the difference in rectangles better than we can see a difference in the circle and slices of the circle. So that's, that's why you shouldn't use a pie chart, except in very tiny instances. Um, and yeah, so I've actually um, answered that question. I've gotten pushed back the other way. I had to recreate like a legacy dashboard in Tableau and it had a lot of pie charts. And so rather than making an issue of it, like saying, oh, well, let's not do this and I'll get into my geometry example. I just, I just quietly made it into a bar chart and a tree map. And then I, I got the pushback like, oh, well, where'd the pie charts go? I said, oh, well, there's, there's some reasons why. And actually it looks, it looks like the one on the not that. All, all these not that's are based on, on real life. So it looked almost exactly like the one on the left or the right, excuse me. And so instead I did a toggle and you can do that in Tableau too. You know, you can like just uh, switch a container visibility on and off. So I had the pie chart there, but then I had a little toggle to say, see the bar chart and that helps. And it's these little steps too. Like if, if you're finding if any of these tips, um, yeah, just like just then slow, uh, bring people along. Or I found like people like the, the data tables a lot where they'll actually present that in a slide or call it a dashboard. That's another, um, another topic is a data table a dashboard. I don't think it is. Is the data table worthy of being shown in a presentation? I don't think it is but people like them. So I will then just move them to the end of the dashboard. <laughs> yeah, so they're still there or I'll do a toggle, show data. So if somebody, you know, for any of these like this, okay, great, and we used to have a data table right underneath and we loved it, you know, our CFO loves it. Well, okay, uh, yeah, he, all he has to do is just click show data and boom, there's the data table. But it's, but 99% of people will not do that. I actually, I had one, um, one executive who, did see a data table one time, pass it around, and he said, I think this tells a great story. And God bless that guy, because he, he, like, his brain was a computer. It had to be. I just, I can't work like that. Like, he, all these numbers, and he, and to him, he could see it and say, oh, wow. And again, 99% of people will look at that and like, I, what, I don't even know what I'm looking at. And I'm one of those people. So I have to visualize as much as I can. Um, and most people have to do that. So yeah, anything that you can help them is what is that? Ryan, you probably know the term better, cognitive load. Yeah, like what if, if you're making somebody do a lot of work, if their brain has having a lot of work to visualize it themselves or figure it out, you didn't do the work. You should be doing that work as the, as the, um, in the data visualization. So then once the executive sees it or any, or any audience, they aren't doing any work. It pops out of them and what their brain powers focus on or what decisions that come out of that, what action comes out of that. That means that you did your job. Don't, don't put any of the visualization or the analysis on their, on their brain. Do it on your brain. There's some easy ways to do it and let them focus on what, uh, what they need to work on. So that's a long way to the answer to the pie chart. <laughs> I have a dual question from, yeah. from another donut pie chart <laughs> question. Okay. With my question. Uh, th this person says, I do agree, but I do love, uh, donut chart data inside of it. So okay. do you ever get requests for that or yes. pushback from that? Yeah, I, I, I have. Although I got to say less and less over the years. Like I used to be earlier on. Same with like, uh, I think I saw on LinkedIn the other day, uh, a gauge came up, like that dashboard gauge. gauge. And I think um, in the olden days, Omniture 
have that as part of their analytics dashboard, a gauge. Um, so yeah, if somebody asked me, the question was a donut chart um, with the data in the middle. If somebody asked me to do that, um, I've, I put Buck at that more in the infographics uh, and not a data visualization. So great, for, if they need it for a slide, happy to do it. That's a great way to just kind of draw a big audience's attention. Here's a data point in the middle. Here's a donut chart. Again, as long as it's accurate to the story, um, that's fine. If you're trying to build it into an ongoing dashboard or report, that is not the best way to convey the information clearly. And so I will push back on that or I will do my toggle um, if they do that. And, and the toggle, I'm telling you, the toggle is a great way. I guess I could talk about that too. If they ask you for something, you, you know it's not the best way. You know that most of their audience will not, will not um, interact with that as they expect then just toggle it. And maybe, you know, maybe I'm wrong and that's great. If people never toggle, then great, then everybody wins. Um, but yeah, so some of those, I think the donut chart is the same reason because you're not just then showing a slice, you're taking out the middle. So you have to do pi r squared minus pi r1 squared to get the area that you've taken out and then do that radian and arc uh, calculation to see, well, what are these pieces even? It's, it's just, it can be very, um, misleading and it's really just if you glance at it and it's a good infographic then fine yeah same with gauges it's a fine infographic Do you have any other uh, no just one comment uh, so you see one on the right it's got lots of colors a lot of slices on the right you've got just four colors mostly grayed out because mm -hmm. it's irrelevant uh, going to what you and I talked about on the our, our the, the three three or three chart show if you had to go into a, an executive meeting and you had to fix that thing on the right, yeah, and you had to do it, you only had an hour to do it. Yeah, that's at least a, a reasonable a suggestion. To mm -hmm. like try to focus on something. Don't try to show yeah. everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. My. Yeah. Yeah. The talking here. Yeah. Minor. Minor. Notes, absolutely. I. I did. You know. Again, this is based on real life. This happened to me before. Um, it was a Thursday morning, 9 a.m. I'm just starting my second cup of coffee. And board of directors, 11 a.m., they need a new, new slide. Actually, they need three slides. They need to take the, this entire program and condense it into three slides. Okay, fine. I can do that. Great. 10 o'clock. Uh, here, here's like the start of that. Oh, and they changed the template. Wait, why? They changed, they changed, we had this template for like a year and a half. They changed the template, and it needs to be on it. This 11, which, which changed. Like, again, I build a lot of these in Tableau. So I, I have like the sizes all right. I actually put a slide template underneath it. And then I build like the blanks on top of it and everything. And I have the, the, um, the pick, you know, the pixel perfect as much as I can. So that was a big deal for me. So yes, a lot of times um, that question, a fast fix is essential. I, I don't have time to think, well, shoot, I really need to group these together into some more meaningful categories or do a calculated field to kind of clean this up. I only have time to go into the filter Get these all of these great done <laughs> and then keep moving so um yeah that's another example too based on based on real life the fast fix is uh is key the cool thing about that that is uh, once you do a fast fix like that for a big meeting you will never forget it and the next time you're doing that at the beginning so the next time hopefully you would never even start with a rainbow it would never even get to that point right before the meeting you've already condensed the color palette in a meaningful way and so it's, it's less stress so that that's just it the more you do this stuff it just becomes not like a, a last minute thing. It's just like how you do it. Um, and again, hopefully you'll find better better ways to do it too. Um, that's that's a cool thing about all this. Yeah. So one tangible problem and a solution that I've seen um, for the scatter plotting. I have scatter plots that basically go like extremely close to the zero line, mm -hmm. and then you have a lot of dots there. And yeah. But you want to make the quadrant um, because and no one can see. Like, mm -hmm. No one can figure out what are those quadrants close to each other. I've used logarithmic scale. Yeah. Yeah. And then they spread out well. Mm -hmm. And then you have to hide the logarithmic scale and just show them the network that are actually planets. Yeah. And show them. Some people get confused because it starts from like one to ten to like and then, yeah. the six planet one and then the thousand is like right over. Yeah. Some people are able to take that apart. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I've done that too. Yeah, you know, scatter plot. Like, how do you make it make more sense with when there's, especially when there's outliers or a lot of groupings? I've done it, and I'll get back to that one, where I did one, yeah, for a resort company. And one of the resorts was like, was literally off the chart, it, like, like that. It was like way off there. You couldn't see anything else because it was just, it, it was a true outlier. It just had so much more volume and, and use than anything else. So basically, I excluded it and I made a huge note about that. You know, so, so on the slide, the scatter plot had all the other ones. One similar to like the, your question about the, they're moving the zero. Some of these elements, they actually detract from understanding what the data is trying to show you. So in that case, I excluded the outlier and then I made on the slide like a big section about that. Here's like by far the leader and here are a couple of key points about that. The rest of them is, is what we're looking at in this slide. So I, I think, yeah, as long as you're super clear, same with logarithmic, I have not tackled that for a business audience. I know that like with the coronavirus, I actually, there's a lot of talk about that. People are using that logarithmic scale to really kind of show like different countries and all that. And it, it's super effective once you understand what you're looking at. But I, I try to never spend any time explaining a chart um, in, a, in a meeting like that. So the logarithmic scares me. It's like, okay, they're gonna start asking. And then also when they start asking something that's not uh, you know, relevant to the actual story you're trying to say, well, then you can get sidelined so easily. And if you only had a few minutes, well, shoot, you just lost it. Um, so yeah, if you can figure out a way to do that logarithmic on a scatter plot, I mean, well, again, if you're talking about like a, a director team, fellow analysts, then absolutely. Then, then the knowledge is there, data literacy is there. You can understand that and you can see, oh, that's why we did it. Great, and, and you can keep moving. But if it's gonna slow you up, uh, depending on the audience, yeah, just try to be careful. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. 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 I, yeah. Yeah. The question about uh, jigger uh, on a scatter plot, jiggering. I know Steve Wexler does that in, um, in his books. Like he'll show that exact same thing. They're, you want to show there's in this one point, there's actually like 30 things. So just move a little bit. Um, I, I would suggest with that, if, if that's the case on this type of scatter plot you want to show, maybe this isn't the best way. Maybe, or maybe kind of like some of your question, maybe you just focus on that little cluster. Like here, here's a larger one. Cause I'll also do follow-ups. Like here's the larger one. And now let's do one deep dive into this data. So that might be a deep, here's a big scatter plot. Let's do a deep dive into this cluster. So you change the axes to, to focus on that and then talk about that. Because I, I don't know if in um, Tableau, if you could do something like that, but I also get nervous about doing that because you're manipulating the data. You're inserting something that's not there. Um, and so if you were to zoom in on it, like a lot of these are very interactive. You, you zoomed in and all of a sudden that jiggering makes things look like, oh, it wasn't the same. Um, that could be more problematic than it's worth. So yeah, I would just try to zoom in if it's meaningful. If it's not meaningful and it's a big group, categorize them and, and clump them in a way that you know makes sense. Yeah. You tweet that in, in this graph, I like to use problems a lot. Do you think that in, in the path of being you know, good for the audience, that yeah. the audience, do you, do you think it makes sense to, on top of each square, right? Like on top of each square on the bottom, that you can label that, mm -hmm. you can say high profit, high sales, yep. less profit, low profit, Sale or definitely, like definitely, yeah. And that helps the the user, like whoever's using that, to get it really quick. Okay, Absolutely. Here is exactly. Yeah. That's that's totally it. You know, yeah, yeah. That, that the labeling was kind of plot. Yeah, that came up a lot too when I posted this. Like, label it. Right. I've done. It wasn't as good. I did a little key, like one, two, three, four. But the, just directly labeling it is is a great way, and especially in a way that's meaningful. If an executive's looking for high high profit, high sales, that's the golden. That's the holy grail. Get their eyes to that. Make them see what's what's in that quadrant, um, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I think the reason why they everybody likes it is because that's what they're seeing since days ago or yeah. years ago when they were maybe reading a book, math book yeah. or magazine. Or yeah, they already seen that before. Exactly, and it goes back to the geography.
uh, geometry too. You know, middle school, you're used to like those quadrants. Yeah. So you used to access and know kind of what those mean. So um, yeah, th th that helps add a lot more meaning to this for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Any Okay, we're almost at time too. Yeah. Is there anything else you need to do, Aaron? The... Yep. Well, thank you, everybody. It was, it was great. Yeah, happy to talk afterwards anytime. Yeah, thank you. Draw for the new gift cards. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah, you get to the okay. Guys. All right, everybody, hang on. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw for the e gift cards. Find the right tab. Oh yes, the card. Yep. Oh, this is a Mac. I don't know how to use this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that didn't work. How do I select all? Nope, there we go. I got, I'm, I got somewhere. There we go. All right, we'll do this four times. I said they had to be here until the end. <laughs> Yeah. No, not in a moment. Yeah, I gotta reset it. No, don't reset it that way. Okay, let's try this. Paste. Nope, that didn't work either. All right. We'll, yes, we'll we'll send that out later. Uh, we've got four to give away. Um, Chris, we have one for you as well. Thanks for coming. Uh, as those that weren't able to come in person uh, aren't, weren't able to get two shirts a piece, as everybody here is is able to, to get. So uh, keep an eye out for our next um, our next tug in April. Let me see if I got that slide here, Chris. Yeah, you got it. I would if it stopped clicking around. I'll find it down here. Yeah, Q2. Got uh, Kevin and April. There's a twin brother. Yep, twin brothers. Um, in May, we've got Josh Wilson, and in June, uh, Jalen. Uh, so a uh, couple of good speakers coming up. Uh, keep an eye out. Uh, we've, we've been doing this every month for at least the last year. Yeah, so uh, we're trying to stay active. If anybody has any suggestions, you want to be a speaker, uh, you want to present something, let us know. We'll, we'll squeeze in uh, where we can. We're booked up for uh, main speakers through November, I believe. So we've got a lot of line, lot lined up. Uh, thanks to the leadership team for all the help and, and all the work been done. Eric, I'm looking at you. Eric, I'm looking at you over there. Uh, so that's it. Uh, we'll see you guys. Ryan, sometimes, sometimes we're gonna have to. Yeah, we're, we're, he's, he's got to commit first. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's gonna be in person, so people have to come in person yeah. to see Playfair and friends from Playfair. Great, amazing content all the time over there. Uh, LinkedIn and their page, or their web page. All right, until next time. Thanks, everybody. Have a great St. Patty's Day. We're gonna go drink some green beer across the street. Yeah.